The American Medical Association reports that 34% of physicians regularly face allegations of medical malpractice. These lawsuits happen when patients are not receiving the necessary standard of care, which can lead to serious injury or even death. Thankfully, all medical centers should have standard policies in place to ensure quality patient care. But it's important to make sure that these facilities have up-to-date guidelines, especially considering the last few years of public health issues. When talking about guidelines and policies, what do I mean? I am referring to two terms in particular, universal precautions and standard precautions. Hi everyone, I'm Maria from eTactics, and today I'm going to go over the difference between universal precautions and standard precautions in healthcare. Before we get started, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button below. Also, hit that alert bell icon so that when we post new, helpful content, you get notified. According to the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, less than 1% of bacteria is actually harmful, but that 1% could mean the difference between life and death for some people. Microbes of all kinds can pose a serious threat to humans, not just bacteria. This includes viruses, fungus, protozoans, and helminths. And ironically, you can find a lot of these threats in healthcare facilities. Having necessary precautions in place is important to not only provide quality care to patients, but also to protect staff and the community from potential outbreaks. In 1987, the CDC introduced the Recommendations for Prevention of HIV in Healthcare Settings. In this document, universal precautions were suggested for not only patients with known bloodborne illnesses, but those with unknown infection statuses as well. Universal precautions protected medical staff from blood and certain body fluids and was a response to the human immunodeficiency virus or HIV epidemic. To protect healthcare workers, gloves and face shields were used while working with patients. The concept of personal protective equipment, PPE, during this time grew to include a wider variety of equipment. Protective gear such as plastic aprons and other covers became PPE staples to keep body fluids off hair, skin, and clothes. Frequent hand washing was a core practice at this time as it is today. Workers also made sure to avoid exposure to needles and other instruments when the potential for contact with blood or body fluid is possible. Along with protective barriers and hand hygiene, universal precautions focused on how infectious waste gets discarded. However, these policies concerning waste were determined by state and local regulations. Policies included defining, collecting, storing, decontaminating, and disposal of waste. But even with these precautions and policies in place, there was still a threat that was not being addressed, airborne pathogens. In 1996, the CDC expanded on the idea of universal precautions by publishing the CDC guideline for isolation precautions in hospitals. This document drew from the major features of universal precautions, as well as body substance isolation standards, to create today's standard precautions. With these expanded safety measures, medical professionals not only wielded protection from bloodborne pathogens, but airborne pathogens as well. Regardless of a patient's infection status, under these rules, medical staff must take the necessary precautions while caring for patients. Blood, as well as any and all body fluids, secretions, and excretions are considered infectious material. Standard precautions are the minimum guidelines applied to all patients today, regardless of infection status or healthcare setting. These include hand hygiene, personal protective equipment, respiratory hygiene, sharp safety, safe injection practices, sterilized instruments and devices, clean and disinfect environmental surfaces. Standard precautions and universal precautions are both safety concepts that heavily overlap, but these terms are not interchangeable. Making sure your team is up to date with the latest healthcare protocols and precautions is one of the most important steps to preventing medical malpractice claims. If you'd like to learn more about universal and standard precautions, reach out to eTactics. And you've already made it this far into the video, so you might as well like it, share it, and comment below.